So that that brings up a, a good point because things go into storage at the Smithsonian. Um, and I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about this because I had read or heard that when uh, you started this, uh, the idea for this exhibit, you of course needed items to display and you started to go through the databases of what the Smithsonian has that's Disney related and you found tons and tons of stuff not all of which could make it into the exhibit of course um of course it would have to be parks related it would have to be but there's so many other Disney related items so i wanted to ask are there any items that you would uh you wouldn't mind sharing with us maybe they're on display or kind of in the in the in the back catalog of the smithsonian that are some of your other favorite Disney items that aren't part of the exhibit yeah um well the, the things that aren't part of the exhibit that, you know, if we had more space, of course, would have been amazing. Or we have one of the original teacups from Disneyland and we have one of the original um, Dumbo ride cars from Disneyland. Oh, that's um, awesome. They were donated for Disneyland's 50th anniversary. Um, we have some sketches from Steamboat Willie that are really, oh, really nice. cool. Yeah. Um, pencil sketches. Um, and I believe one of those is on display currently in the Entertainment Nation exhibit, which is across the floor um, from from my our um, Disney exhibit. Um, but one of the sort of I think really like illustrative stories of both the Smithsonian and and Disney uh, is an object that's in the show. Um, but I think as a librarian, you'll like this yes. <laughs> sort of this story. So there's a there's a button actually in the same case as Bobger's t-shirt and it's a it's a Mickey Mouse button and it just says I danced Disneyland. Um, and so when I was in our database and I was, you know, putting in keywords at Mickey Mouse, you know, Disneyland, I came across this button and all the only data that I was publicly available on it, you know, was uh, button reading I danced Disneyland. <laughs> and I was like, I have to know what this is. So I'm looking at the context clues, right, <laughs> for this button, and it's in um, storage with objects that are labeled uh, gay rights, gay rights protest. And I was like, okay, well, you know, luckily, being a Disney historian, I do know that there, uh, you know, was basically one sort of big um, gay rights protest at Disneyland. And that was um, when Andrew Exler, who now goes by Crusader, and his partner um, went and danced at the Tomorrowland Terrace in the 1980s together. They were ejected from the park because there was a longstanding rule from the 1950s uh, against same-sex dancing in the parks. Um, and they went to sort of challenge this. Um, and they, they took it to the courts, and eventually there was a ruling in their favor. But by that time, Disney had said, you know what, it's fine. We, we don't actually care. We're going to abolish this rule. So they got rid of yeah. it um, sort of simultaneously with this. Um, but I thought this had to be tied to that somehow. Dancing Disneyland gay rights protest. So I looked up sort of the donor and their name, and I found that they were based in L.A., that they had a large Disneyland collection. They have, um, I think it was at USC or some one of the repositories in California, their papers are there. Um, and it said that they were in the finding aid that there were pictures of them at Disneyland. And I wrote to them and I was like, please, can you tell me about this? And uh, they could not, but I emailed <laughs> Andrew Exler, who I found online. And I said, what do you know about this button and this guy? And he said, oh yeah, they're of the right to dance. We went back to Disneyland, we all danced, we celebrated. And then we went to one of those machines uh, at the, you know, on Main Street where you used to be able to imprint your own button and they all printed their own buttons that said, I danced at Disneyland. Um, and so that was a story that I was able to reunite with its object um, and actually really fit. It was like perfect for the show. Um, yeah. But it's, and it's also sort of illustrative of the, you know, there, there's, some of them are really well researched and understood and some of them aren't. And there's all this potential um, for finding these great stories and sure. these objects. And you got to uncover that story. And now we have that story to go along with the object, which is pretty awesome. That's, that is really cool. Doing That's all that in investigative research like that. I love, I love that. It. If you like this video, like and subscribe. If you really like this video, visit SynergyLovesCompany.com for the full audio podcast.